Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Brondad. That's right, it rhymes with salt cod, which is the star ingredient and probably the reason this delicious hot appetizer spread from the south of France is not more popular. I mean, this stuff is so tasty it should be way more popular than buffalo chicken wings and nachos. So hopefully this video helps in that effort, as this really is something every cook needs to have in their party food repertoire. Pardon my French. No, seriously, pardon my French, it's terrible. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started by prepping the salt cod. And it comes in this little wooden box. So let's go ahead and remove it. And as you'll see, it's going to be very firm and completely coated with salt. And as I was unpacking this, I was thinking to myself, why a wooden box? But one glance at the label and I had my answer. It's a product of Canada. And those people love their wood. I mean, their flag is a picture of a tree leaf. Seriously, I'm not making that up. So let's remove it from the container. And like I said, it's going to be very hard, dry, and salty. So before we can work with this, we're going to have to soak that to leach out a lot of that salt. So what we want to do is rinse that under cold water to remove most of that salt from the surface. And then we'll put it into some kind of container with a lid and cover it with lots of fresh cold water. And what we need to do is soak this in the fridge for a day to a day and a half, changing the water at least four or five times. So over the course of the next 24 to 36 hours, pull it out, pour out the water, add fresh water, pop it back in, and repeat. And at the end of that soaking period, you should have something that looks like this. It's going to sort of but not quite look and feel like fresh fish again. And at this point, we can prep it for the milk poaching. So I'm going to transfer that into a saucepan. And right here, I decided to cut this big, thick piece into a couple smaller strips so that this will poach a little more evenly. So we will toss our soaked salt cod into a saucepan, to which I'm going to add a couple bay leaves and also a few sprigs of fresh thyme, which I do recommend if you have some and you have some. And then we're going to pour in about a cup and a half of whole milk. And by the way, if you want to make this a little extra French, you could use heavy cream here, but the milk works just fine. And then only because this shot was looking a little too white, I decided to give it a little pinch of cayenne. Hey, that never hurts. And at that point, we can head over to the stove and place this on medium high heat. So we're going to start this mixture cold and slowly bring it up to temperature. And this will take a few minutes, but eventually that milk's going to heat through and poach that cod. So don't go away because we want to catch it at the perfect point, which is just when it starts to flake. All right, those pieces will go from kind of firm and rubbery to where they easily break apart if you twist it with the tongs. You see that? And by the way, don't stop till it's flaking. All right, a few seconds overcooked is better than a few seconds undercooked. Okay, so that's all we're looking for. At that point, you can turn off the heat. You're done. And we'll grab a strainer and we will transfer that fish into a bowl. And do not throw away that liquid. You must reserve that milk. We're going to use that in a minute. So we'll fish out our fish and we'll reserve the liquid. And all I'm gonna do is let that sit on the cutting board for a few minutes until it's cool enough to handle, at which point we will break it up. And while we are letting that sit for a bit, this would be the perfect point for us to start cooking our potatoes. So I'm gonna go with one pound of peeled and quartered Yukon gold potatoes, which we're gonna simmer until perfectly tender along with some garlic. So I'm gonna add eight or 10 cloves of garlic that I'm cutting in half. And that might seem like a lot of garlic, but because we're gonna cook it with the potatoes like this, it's really gonna mellow out that flavor and give us something pretty sweet and subtle. And once that's set, we'll head to the stove and simply cook those potatoes until they're tender. All right, just as if we were making mashed potatoes, except don't add any salt here. All right, even though we soaked it, our salt cod's still gonna be salty. So we do not wanna add any salt until the end when we adjust, okay? So our potatoes are working and we can move back over to our now cool enough to handle cod. And what we wanna do is break that up into a bowl. And the reason we're doing this before we mash it is to check for anything that's not really nice pieces of fish. All right, so we're gonna discard any skin, any bones, any scales, any fish hooks, okay? Or anything else that looks sketchy. And then once our fish has been gone through and broken up, we're gonna give this a thorough mashing. But before we do, I'm gonna add a little bit of freshly grated lemon zest and also a few splashes of our reserved cooking liquid. And then we're gonna take one of these wire potato mashers or something similar and mash this fish very, very fine. And how fine you do it is up to you, of course. A lot of chefs actually will put this in a food processor and make it completely smooth. And then others will just barely break it up. But for me, I do like to pulverize it pretty small. So I'm gonna mash mine for a few minutes, adding a few splashes of that cooking liquid along the way until my mixture looks like this. And at this point, we can strain in the rest of the poaching liquid and give that one final mix. And I guess if you want, you could just add all that liquid when you first start mashing. But for me, it just mashes better at the beginning with just a little bit of the liquid. And at this point, it may seem like a lot of liquid to you, but it's not. We still have to mash in all that potato. And this is not supposed to be a dense mixture. Okay, we wanna keep it pretty light. So that's perfect right there. And then hopefully by this time our potatoes are tender. And when they are, we will drain those very thoroughly and then add that to our bowl and mash those in. And you will see some recipes that have you mash the potato and the cod first 
and then mix in the cooking liquid. But I do prefer this method because personally, I really want to make sure my cod mixture is mashed just right. And sometimes that's a little harder if it's done with the potato. But anyway, that's up to you. You are the mod squad for how to put together your brondad. Now that is how you date yourself with a reference. And once those potatoes have been mixed and mashed in, we are ready to add the final touches, which would be a little bit of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Right, I'm gonna use about a half a lemon. We'll also add a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And then last but not least, a lot of olive oil. All right, we're gonna stir in about a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. And I like to do it in two additions. So we'll put in a couple tablespoons here and we'll mix that around to emulsify that in. And once that disappears, we'll add the rest, mix that in. And at that point, our brandade is pretty much done and ready to bake. Except for one thing you're going to taste to see if it needs more salt, which it almost never does. And I'm going to cover the seasoning and the salt issue in the blog post. We're shooting for almost, but not too salty. All right, think smoked salmon, think salami, things you may have had before that are seasoned right up to that point. So give it a taste. It's probably fine. But on the rare chance it tastes a little undersalted, you could add a pinch. And by the way, you can make this part ahead of time. And then just brown it in the oven when you're ready. But you know what? We're ready. So we'll transfer that into a lightly oiled, oven-proof baking dish. Anything heat-proof is going to work, but these thick earthenware ramekins really work nicely because they keep it really hot when it comes out. And we'll generously fill that up, maybe going up slightly past the edge a little bit. And then we'll just take the back of our spoon and smooth it out a little bit. And it was at this point I remembered to put some foil down. It's so much easier to throw away a little piece of foil than to scrub a pan. Sorry, earth, but it's true. And then before this goes in the oven, one last optional step. I'm going to smear the top with some creme fraiche. All right, a little bit of heavy cream would also work. And you have other options. Some people like breadcrumbs. Some people will do a little dusting of Parmesan. So I'm going to finish mine with a little bit of creme fraiche. And then maybe the most important step of all, we have to nook and cranny the top. So I'm going to take a big spoon and make some indentations this way, all right, all the way across. And then we'll turn it and do the same thing the other way. And the pattern really doesn't matter, as long as you have lots of peaks and valleys. And then once we've done that, we can go ahead and place this in the center of a very hot 450 degree oven for about 20 minutes or so, or until it's browned and incredibly beautiful. And don't be afraid to cheat and give this like a minute under the broiler to finish giving it that gorgeous professional gratin look. And then I got great news. We don't have to let this cool. We want to serve this piping hot, so we'll transfer that next to some crostini or other bread-based delivery system. And yes, that was incredibly hot and painful, so maybe you should use a towel or some tongs. But anyway, we're gonna transfer that onto our serving platter and our brandade is officially done. And you know what? I'm going right in, I can't wait. And this thing is just everything you want in a baked appetizer spread. It's hot and creamy, just garlicky enough, hint of lemon. And then the cod gives it a really unique saltiness and very subtle and pleasant fishiness. Yes, pleasant fishiness is possible. And you know what? I think next to aioli, this is probably my favorite food from the south of France. I mean, just really, really nice. Or should I say nice? But anyway, that's it. Brandad, or at least my version of it. So I really do hope you give this relatively unknown and incredibly tasty dish a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.